You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 140. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. So very thrilled that you've tuned in. Now, today's guest is Nicole Walters, and today's topic is how to create a five-day live video series to rapidly grow your email list. Now, first, let me tell you about our guest. Nicole is a former top-selling corporate exec who quit her six-figure sales job and turned her side gig into a multi-million dollar online business. She now teaches others what they need to do to also move forward with turning their passion into profits. Plus, she is hysterical. I mean, the girl makes me laugh all the time. So I love having people on the show where we can have a lot of fun and get down to business. Now, I first met Nicole at the Nashville Business Boutique event. And since then, I have been such a huge fan of hers, and I was so excited to get her on the show. Now, let's talk about this topic. As you probably already know, I like to make my podcast episodes mini trainings. And so when I was at the Business Boutique event with Nicole, we sat down in the green room before she went on stage, and we talked about what this episode could be about. And she told me the story of how she put together this five-day live video series and how it grew her email list rapidly. And I said, let's talk about that. Let's teach people how to do their own little mini series to grow their email list. So she literally put together an outline. We went back and forth and we wanted to make this really, really actionable. So here's what you need to know. Number one, what we're going to teach you today can help kickstart your email list growth. And number two, it can kickstart your confidence on video Two equally important must when doing business online. Also, in the second half of this episode, I do a rapid fire Q&A with Nicole, all about the do's and don'ts of live video via social media. Her insights are priceless. So make sure to listen to the very, very end. So I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and jump in. Nicole Walters, I am thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Amy, I'm so excited. Your enthusiasm. I wasn't ready. (laughs) (laughs) Well, every time I get around you, I like have this huge smile. Last time we were together, my cheeks hurt because I was laughing so hard. So (laughs) this is going to be a lot of fun. It will be definitely. Now, my audience probably already knows you, but just in case, I want you to start with your story because I don't always start out interviews that way, but your story is too good to pass up the story of how you got where you are today. So will you just dive into it and share it with us? Sure, absolutely. Partly because um, I love telling it because it's it's totally crazy. <laughs> and it also is because I think your audience is amongst the smartest, brightest, most like hardworking, and I would just love to get to know mm. them better. So, just to know a little bit about me, I worked a nine to five job like most people out there, working in corporate America as a senior executive for a, a multi billion dollar Fortune five hundred, and I was doing the nine to five grind. And eventually, I got to a place where I was just like, I just I can't. I've got more skills. I want to take the same thing I'm doing in corporate America, building this business, building these corporations, and and offer that to everyday entrepreneurs. So I started sharing that journey live on the Periscope app. This was before Facebook Live. It feels like forever ago. Isn't now. that it's weird that? <laughs> yeah, it's only been a year, but you're like, this was before some social media was out. It's so weird. Right, right. This is when live was just like kind of a new thing, if you will, one year ago. <laughs> so, so crazy. So, it's so crazy. So, you know, I was sharing my journey, just kind of saying, gosh, you know, this nine to five grind and here's what I'm doing to build my business and here's how I can help you. Just, you know, kind of teasing the waters and finally got to the point where I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready to quit. I think I'm ready to quit. And I decided to do that. Well, it wasn't just random. I mean, obviously I'd saved money, started my business, built all the processes. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit. And I did it live online in front of 10,000 people. 
So guys, she did it live on Periscope where I watched it. I was no dying. Way. Yes. And I was no dying and I might've had to catch a recording of it because I think it was a little bit after you had done it and somehow or another you replayed it and I'm watching it thinking, are you kidding me? And she's literally talking to her boss saying, this isn't going to work for me. And here's why. And I need to move on. And I'm like, my heart's beating fast for you. Like it's happening right then. It was crazy. Oh my gosh, Amy, I was getting text messages from like my parents, from my friends and family, and it was all over the place. Like some people were like, you better do this, girl. (laughs) Other people though are like, are you trying to never work in this town again? (laughs) I mean, it was really the spectrum. But overwhelmingly, what was great was I knew it was the right thing to do. And even my boss on the line was like, you know what? If you love what you're doing, if you're passionate about what you're doing, if you know that you're making money and generating an income elsewhere, then you are 100% in the right place and just go. Just I love go live that. your passion. It was amazing. I mean, and you've never looked back. And so what I probably should have started out with is what is your business? So this business that you were building at the time, it's the same business you have now, right? Absolutely. So when I was working in corporate America, I was a sales executive within the business development and product development stream. So I helped with, uh, it was insurance. So I was helping with developing the structures around the insurance program and then marketing it to high level senior executives. So it was only business to business with like your large types, like your Walmarts and your PepsiCo's, those sorts. And it was fun and interesting and I enjoyed building businesses, but it's way more fun with everyday entrepreneurs. So now I take those corporate strategies, the things that we tend not to pay a lot of attention to, like your your sales division and using tools like QuickBooks and Wonderlist and building in that structure. And I help people apply it to their everyday small entrepreneur business. So you get lots and lots of wins, but they're small and they're sustainable. And that leads to a really big future. It really does. And I feel like you make selling feel so doable and not sleazy, of course, and Mm -hmm. something incredibly necessary as we know it is, but it's almost something that becomes fun. I really do think you make it fun. It is fun. And it, and I think what I try to do with sales is that I, I definitely try to position it. So one, make sure that you're where you're supposed to be, your purpose, because if you're struggling with sales, you definitely want to evaluate and make sure that you're comfortable and happy with selling whatever it is you're offering, because that may be the first mistake. But then after that, you're probably in the right place and you just need to be passionate about it and know how to connect with your audience. Did you just snap? I sure did. <laughs> That's what I do when I do really well. <laughs> That was amazing. Yes, Nicole, you better slay that answer. (laughs) Okay. This is why it's fun to hang out with Nicole. And as I mentioned in the intro, I got to hang out with you for a few days, but the snapping just took it to a whole new level. I might have to adopt that when I kind of nail it. I'm just going for it. I cannot believe this just got caught on your podcast. (laughs) That's amazing. I really hope you all heard the snaps. And I think today all of us should find a moment when we just kind of nail it and we just go for it and we just snap and just say like, we got it. That was great. Okay. Speaking of you nailing it, there is one area that you do particularly well. And when I was with you at the business boutique event, I love that you said like, this is my jam. This is my thing. And it might not be that for everybody and you get it, but video, video is definitely your thing. Would you admit that? Would you say that was right? Would you snap to that? (laughs) Would you snap? I am very fortunate that the algorithm on social media loves it as well. Yes, video is definitely my thing. It's where I started and it's where I'm crushing. Okay. So that definitely is for sure. But not everybody has to be just as good on video in order to start, you know, experimenting with it. Would you agree with that too? Totally true because the algorithm's favorable. <laughs> if if yes. you're on there doing anything at all, you're probably going to see a turn up in your results, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Definitely. Everyone knows my issues with video and how I've, I've been always a little bit more nervous than I'd like to admit around video. I've totally adopted it this year, but I also know that there's a place for all of us if we want to explore and experiment with it. And that's what this episode is really about. So I asked Nicole to come on today's podcast because I wanted to talk about a specific strategy that she implemented in her business with huge success. And we're calling it the five day live video niche market series. And basically it's a strategy that she put together to rapidly grow her email list. So first of all, will you just break down what that looked like, what you did, and then we'll get into the steps. 
Sure, absolutely. So it's kind of crazy because, I mean, you are the list building guru. Like, I mean, you got that down to a science, especially with leveraging things like webinars and just different strategies. But it was cool because I was saying to myself, well, live video is new and I've got to figure out how to leverage this because at the end of the day, you need to have a strong list. Everybody knows this, right? Yes. So I am on live video and most live video platforms aren't integrated yet where you can say, hey, click below. Or if you're watching this video, just type in your email. You know, like oh, it's not set up like that. I can't yet. wait. I can't wait, but it's not quite there yet. So because it isn't, that means that you have to direct people somewhere and you have to give them a reason when they're watching to tune in and you've got to continue that relationship offline. So with this series, I said to myself, gosh, I've got an audience that's kind of showing up and I want them to bring on new people. That was the first goal. The second goal was I really want to build my list and I want to see how quickly I can build it. So what does that look like? Should I dive right into the step-by-step? -step? Yes. But before we get into the step-by-step, -step, what was your specific video series about? Sure. So my series, this one was all about training your consumers to have a stronger relationship with you. So what that means is if you are a brick and mortar business owner, or if you are an online digital business owner, you've got to have healthy boundaries, right? With your, with your clients and your consumers, meaning they probably shouldn't be texting you at any hour. And, you know, it's necessary to showcase your professionalism by not doing too much. You think that you're doing a great job, but you're offering everything in the kitchen sink. And that's really hurting your relationships rather than strengthening them. So I broke that down into a five-day series where I taught on different steps of business professionalism that actually grow your business and deepen your relationships. Okay, cool. Because I wanted her to give that example so you guys could see th what the content looked like for Nicole and possibly how to model it for your own content and what would make the most sense for your audience. So let's get into these steps. So there's five steps to create this five-day live video niche market series. What's step number one? So step number one is obviously choosing your market, right? But you know what you do, you know what your business is about, you know your industry, but you have to niche it down. And one of the things that my friend Pat Flynn always says is the riches are in the niches, yes. you know? <laughs> And it's so, so true. People want to know specifically what they're showing up for. That's part of the value proposition. That's part of what you offer. So I took what I'm known for, which is sales and having great relationships and really knowing how to maximize the lifetime values of each of my clients. And I niched that down. I said, well, where can I really help people grow? I can help people build stronger boundaries and deepen those relationships. Let me turn that into a five-day series. And on the first day, I taught something really simple, like how to strengthen your email correspondence to deepen that relationship. Then the next day, I taught on how to interact on a face-to-face -face level that'll make sure that you're still strengthening those relationships but keeping proper boundaries. And I called it the Team Too Much series. Don't do too much in your business. Okay, so I have a question about this niche. Do you say niche or do you say niche? I, okay, so I say I say niche, but you kind of rolled with the niche thing, and I was like, it's our, it's our podcast. So it's you are niche. so funny. I kind of <laughs> thought you did. I think I should say niche, but it always feels weird to me. So let's just say niche for the rest of the show. Good. I okay. said niche because it sounds French, and I've always wanted to be fancy. Right. So let's say niche. <laughs> okay, we're gonna be fancy today, and we're going with it. But I have a question for you about this audience. So when I think about my business, I serve a lot of different kind of entrepreneurs, but if I were to do this five-day series, would you suggest that I choose one type of entrepreneur, such as the entrepreneur that wants to create an online training business based on their expertise? So I really get specific about that very focused audience. Is that what you mean by the niche market? Absolutely. So if you want to get a little bit more detailed into it, because I know you always like to dive deep. Yeah. So with my five-day series, I actually took my overall content, but each day was targeted towards a different avatar within my brand. So I wanted to make sure that I was speaking to all the different people that are interested in what I have to offer. So day one was targeting the mompreneurs in my business to make sure I was deepening my relationship there. The next day was targeting the newbies that were in my business and making sure that I was dealing with a subject matter within the overall series that really spoke to them. So that, that way I was actually covering a basis and everyone who tuned in got at least one day where they said this was fire and meant for me. Oh, wow. So you took it to an entirely new level. Okay. So that's really good to know. So you've got some options in terms of who you're targeting with Absolutely. this five-day series. And maybe in one month you choose a really specific audience, like Nicole could have just went for the mompreneurs. And then yep. the next month she could have just went for the newbies or she put it all in the five days, which is really cool. So you've got some options for sure. Definitely. Okay. So what do you do in step two? 
So in step two, once you have everything outlined and you already know the market that you're going to be speaking to, you want to create a landing page, just something simple. It can be either through your email server or you can use something like lead pages, whatever it is. And you want to create a landing page where this is going to be your capture site. This is where you're going to get all your opt-ins. This is your, your home base for this event. And it's where you're going to have a worksheet or toolkit, and you're going to post any homework related to the series. So the way this landing page works is really, really cool. You set it up, and as your advertising goes out and you're talking about it and you're posting this link, everyone comes back here and they have to opt in. But the opt-in doesn't work like a traditional freemium. They're not opting in to just get a checklist or opting in in order to join the live broadcast. No matter what, you get the broadcast. What you're opting in for is to get your workbook, your work with that you're going to use that's compatible with the live broadcast so that you can get the most out of it, that you can walk away with actionable takeaways that you can apply to your business and so that you can feel like, gosh, this really had some value. Ooh, so that's good. And then how do you incorporate the homework? So I love it because one of the series that I did involved having people be better team leaders. So the homework that I had was, okay, once you're done listening to my live video, there's a five-point list of homework that you can take back to your team in order to reteach this content to strengthen that relationship. So what happened was I not only got opt-ins for my team leaders that showed up on the video, after they taught the homework, they also got their team members to opt-in. And then they got their team members to opt-in. And you better believe that maximized my results. And I had a a big list building boom there. Okay. So that is really good. Now let's say, I know later on in the steps, we're going to talk about how to do that call to action. But if we're just staying focused on the lead magnet right now, are you doing different lead magnets for each of the five days, or it's just one that you get to mention throughout the five days? It's just one toolkit. It's one toolkit that's for the entire five days. Right. And it really is a like kind of, kind of like an ebook that has all of the information for the entire series. So what's great about that is even if someone tunes in starting on day three, because we know how live video works, people pop in, they pop out, right? So they're like, what did I land in? But this is awesome. So if someone pops in on day three, what's great is they're still incentivized, incentivized to get that toolkit because you can say, if you miss day one and two, it's okay because I've got the details in the toolkit. And you can still join in and catch everything from day three on. Okay. So the first I'll point out that you've got to do some work up front. That's why we're giving you guys these steps. You got to do some work up front. I love the idea of creating the workbook so they can walk through it with you at any day that they join. But the reason why I think this is so powerful is what I forgot to mention earlier is you had, what was it? 1200 new subscribers in just five days. In just five days. It was unbelievable because people weren't getting that traditional slimy feeling of, I feel like you're just going to sell me something. They were saying, oh, well, I know that you're going to just bring value on this live video. No matter what, I get the video, which is where the content is. I just want to make sure I have the tools so that I can maximize it. And obviously to get the tools, I got to give you my email address so you can send it to me. So, I mean, it really was more of a business transaction and less of a, you're opting into this long-term relationship with a sell at the end of it. Exactly. So it's a different vibe for sure. And I think so many of my listeners are going to love this because one, some of them aren't ready to sell just yet, or two, they just want to focus on the list building before they actually get in front and start doing their webinars or however they're going to sell. So that's why I love this, this model that you're breaking down for us. Okay. So step one, we choose our niche market. Step number two, we create our landing page. What's step number three? So step three is really getting out there to promote. And anyone who's listening to this knows that they either already have the tools or they're going to get them from you, Amy. So Facebook ads are terrific. Making sure that you're doing, you know, anything you can do to promote it by creating posts, getting out there. You can also do little live videos where you just get out there and you say, hey, I've got this series coming up. So you're talking about a one-off situation, but you invite them to the series. There are just so many different ways you can promote. You're always sending them back to that landing page and just saying, hey, get your toolkit because you're going to need that for this series. Series is happening. You're already in, but grab your toolkits that you can make the most of it. Okay. So let's say they want to do this on Facebook live for five days. I know you did it on Periscope. Let's say they're going to do it on Facebook live. So I'm thinking that you can use so many other channels to drive to your Facebook That's live right. series. So like you're jumping on Insta stories or, or Snapchat or Periscope or whatever it might be. You can always be sending traffic back to this live series, right? 
Absolutely. And I mean, if you've picked your Facebook page to be kind of your home for your business or your primary meeting point for your audience, then that works. That can be your hero platform. That can be the place where everyone comes and they know they can find you. So if you are using any of your other platforms, Instagram, Insta Stories, any other live platforms, even ones that aren't live, you know, like Tumblr or whatever, wherever you're posting that information, make sure you're including the link to send them back there and to allow them to register for that free workbook. Perfect. What I do, I use Facebook Live a lot. So I just say amyporterfield.com forward slash live and it just redirects to Perfect. my Facebook page. So it's, I think it's so important that you have a really easy URL or a really easy way to tell people where to find you when you do go live. Absolutely. That's stuff. You don't want to get all jammed up. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, that's, you didn't at all. What I was just thinking was, did you do this at a certain time every single day? Yes, I was very consistent. It's it's kind of like a webinar. You People don't want to miss class. So yes. I definitely said for this series, hey, guys, you can catch me here every day, 7 o'clock, we're going to school. So go grab your toolkit and let's get started. Ooh, I like it a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now that we are going to use social media and we can use hashtags and we can promote it in different ways using static images, live video, all that good stuff, what is step number four? Oh, definitely have a hashtag. What's great about the hashtag is it allows your – community to continue to interact. And the other reason I love a hashtag is actually for data after the fact. So whenever I'm doing my live broadcast and people are implementing, I always let them to know if you find a place that you were, you know, for my team too much series, doing too much in your business and you've corrected it, use the hashtag so that I know. And that way, anyone who's following my series and clicks on this tag, not only are they seeing how they can join, but they're also seeing the results that people are getting thus far. Ooh. Okay. So hashtag really important. Okay. So then what is step number five? So step number five is really that you want to go live with your series. Get out there, go live, deliver great value, and make sure that they're coming back every single day. Your outline, your preparation is going to be a part of that. And make sure that at the end of every single broadcast, when you go live, that you have a call to action. And that call to action is, of course, make sure you have your toolkit. Make sure that you're going out and teaching your team because no matter what, if they've already gotten the toolkit and they're showing up, well, then you want them to spread the word and bring more people in. If you found this valuable to help people to get their toolkit and get their education. So what happens is your list still continues to build. I think my my strongest list building day was actually the third day of my broadcast where people had already come and for the first day and they were like, I, I watched half of it. I didn't have my toolkit. I felt crazy. Let me go get my toolkit. So, Ooh, so that's really good. Amazing amazing how it played out. So yeah, definitely have that call to action. Always send them back to that opportunity to add themselves to your list. One thing I like to teach my students is let's say in a webinar, I always say, if you have your course created before you actually go live with a webinar, you can always tease it and talk about it and get really specific. And the same thing here, if you create that workbook ahead of time, which you need to do because people are opting in as you go live, You can always tease it and refer back to it. And you could say, oh, I added this one thing in the toolkit that you definitely don't want to miss. And it relates to whatever you're talking about live. And it just makes it more real and powerful. That's so, so good. And yeah, one of the things that I did when I was teaching the live series was I told people that I had notes in there. So I was like, we're we're diving deep. We're covering a lot of info. If you're looking for the glossary of terms, I've included that in there so that you don't have to worry about taking notes on those definitions. I mean, I really wanted to make sure it was a high value, solid resource so that if you attended the class, you can still refer back to the book later on and say, yeah, I remember all of this. Okay. So I know you kind of mentioned this earlier, but I really want you to hit home with it in the sense that you said the key in this whole process is that it removes that slimy upsell feeling that traditional freemiums have. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Sure. Absolutely. So anyone who's been in the online space knows that this industry is just taking off. And of course, I don't subscribe to that scarcity mentality. There's still so much room here for people to have successful businesses, but we also have to be aware that consumers are getting smart, they're getting hip, and they understand what's going on when they're opting into a webinar or to your free checklist. They're like, okay, I'm giving you my email. It's to get this free checklist. I'm now going to go into sort of a funnel, right? So right. They're, they're usually okay with it, especially for content, you know, of high value because they're trying to grow their business. But what's nice about this is it's a different spin on that relationship. It's a little fresher. It's saying, hey, you're giving me high value and I know I'm going to get that no matter what, which is awesome. And you're giving me the educational tool to build and get better. So instead of them 
feeling like, okay, I'm getting a freemium and then you're kind of set it and forget it. And I can just kind of use this on my own. You're already building a relationship and training them to see you as a teacher, as a resource, as a go-to for something that will help them build their business. And that's exactly what you want if you want to be able to continue and grow your own business. Ah, So good. So very true. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a few questions based on these five steps. So can we get into those? Okay. Absolutely. The first one, we kind of touched on it, but I want to make it really clear for my listeners. And that is, how do you decide on the content? So if if they're still struggling with, I want to do this five live day niche market kind of series, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to teach. Any other suggestions you have there? Sure. Absolutely. So one of the things I always say as a rule of thumb, if you're just getting into the teaching space to begin with is go simple, but essential. And let's use an example that's totally different from what either of us do. Let's say it's something like fitness, right? So if it's fitness, you're not going to want to teach a five day series where the first day is weight management. Second day is all around nutrition. Third day is everything exercise. That is way too much content to absorb. And you're probably not thinking about how your consumer can get the most out of it. Your content series, your niching down is really going to have to be more about how to prepare your daily meals for a family of five. You know, we're doing meal prep. Yep, <laughs> just yes, one aspect of everything you're doing so that people can not just walk away feeling like, gosh, that wasn't information overload, but two, they can actually implement it and then solidify that relationship by saying, I got results from the stuff you told me. Ooh, that's good. If they can walk away from each of the days doing something that makes them feel like, oh, this actually works or I get it. I want more then they're going to come back for the next day. So if you're giving them too much, they're never coming back. I always say that with a lead magnet in general. If you give them a 50 page ebook, they're likely not coming back anytime soon to buy from you. So be careful with that. Okay. Now I know some of my listeners are thinking, okay, Nicole, how long were these videos? And I know there's no necessarily maybe right or wrong, but how long were your sessions? Oh my gosh, my session. So Periscope is a lot more forgiving. <laughs> People yes. will stay on there a lot longer than Facebook Live. Facebook Live kind of has this train to peter out at around three minutes. We're like, okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> Don't know? tell me that. Yeah. that. I do I'm, videos I'm, a lot longer than three minutes. That better not be I, the case. <laughs> so, well, the average attention span is 12 minutes. So oh, I mean, you can get oh. away with more. And your stuff is so high value, Amy, that everyone's just like, I'm just here for her eyebrows. I'm oh, going to pay attention. I knew she was going face. to say eyebrows in this episode. This is why I love Nicole so much. I'm going to keep her in my pocket and walk around. She loves my eyebrows. And listen, that's a fast friend for me. So definitely BFFs forever. That's it. No one else can use it now, though. Because I totally, (laughs) it's my thing. It's my thing now. I love it. It's definitely one of those things where, you know, on Periscope, I was teaching anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes and it's similar to a webinar platform. So that's kind of the style of teaching I was doing. And people were staying on it. My retention rate was very good. They were watching the entire content and they were very engaged. Awesome. And one thing that you could do, um, if you're going to do Periscope, I agree a little bit more forgiving people stick around longer. Let's say you're going to do Facebook live. I'd watch the stats after your first and second one. And maybe you need to make it a little bit shorter, but get to the point faster. You can play around with this. That's the great thing. I was also thinking that if you did five days of live video on whatever platform, I mean, now just this morning, Nicole and I were reading that you can do live video on Instagram now. So there's, there's a lot of platforms to choose from. But whatever you do, you're getting this experience of showing up for five days in a row doing live video. And for those of you who are scared of live video, you don't feel comfortable on video. At the end of those five days, you're going to feel a lot more confident. And I think it's a great challenge to give yourself as well as use it to grow your email list. That's why I was so excited about this. Okay. So I have a bunch more questions about this. I like Mm -hmm. the idea of the content, really easy to break it down. The length, I think you just want to pay attention to and watch what people are doing with you. Also, how do you handle questions? So I I love live questions. One of the things that I think is awesome about this five series, the five day series is that when you're getting these live questions, it also allows you to fine tune your content. So if on day one, the seri- the content that people are asking about is, oh my gosh, like, cause no one else knows what you're teaching, right? Yes. So on the day one, people are asking a lot of questions about your meal prep series. And they're saying something about like, well, what containers did you use? And how are you storing things? And what's good for what? And what size is that? And you weren't planning on teaching a tools of the trade 
trade day? Well, now you know to add one. So I answer the questions live, but if I find that I'm getting a lot of questions about a specific topic or aspect of what I'm teaching, I actually don't let myself get bogged down or tripped over. I still teach to my content, but then I say, hey, you know what, guys? Don't worry. We've got a dedicated day where we're going to go over just that. And then I rewatch my content, get that information down, and fine-tune my outline. Ooh, okay. So that's good. So that means that when you come out with the content or you come out with the announcement that you're doing a series, you don't necessarily tell them exactly what they're going to learn in each day. That gives you some flexibility to change things as you go. Correct. Like it's super high level. I'll just say, we're going to be covering all aspects from this to this. <laughs> that Great. Sort of thing, okay. You know? So that, that gives me some room to budge. And then, you know, it starts fine tuning and drilling down as we go. And what's great about the questions is usually you just, just in the beginning say, we'll save questions for the end so that that way it doesn't get too crazy while you're going. Cool. Okay. Now, if you have an email list, would you email your list about the series to tell them about it? And if so, how far in advance? There are two types of emails that I send out. So obviously the goal here is to get new people on your list. So your focus really is on on list building from outside of the people who are already on your list. But the email that I send out to the people on my list is the, guys, you know how great this is and and you want people to join this. You know the value from watching me on live broadcasts. Share this, share it with your teams, grow your business, be a good leader, that sort of content. And I just encourage them to have the links to share it. Also, if you have an affiliate relationship, this may be a way to kind of say, you know, this is a great way to get people ready for when you offer them an affiliate relationship down the line with the course. Let them get a preview of what we have to offer for free. Nice. Okay. So that share factor is really important. Now, when you're on live in these five different sessions, are you asking for shares while you're on live as well? Absolutely. So rule of thumb on any live broadcast, I mean, you start out with what I love to call the intro welcome share formula. You introduce yourself, you welcome people to your broadcast, and you ask them to share your content. That's the first three things you always say, because you're never going to get it if you don't ask. Okay. That's a great point. So I like how you just set it up right from the get-go, which actually you just set me up to go into my final section. And I've just got some final insights and random questions about live video in general. So you cool with us diving into some of that? Sure. Of okay. Course. So one of the questions I have for you is how do you prepare before you go live? Now I know how you prepare for this five live video series, but just in general, what are some of your tips and tricks to prepare before you go live or do you prepare? Well, I always prepare. So a lot of people say, oh my gosh, Nicole, you seem so comfortable on camera. It seems so easy and natural for you. I mean, yes, I love people. Yes, I'm extroverted by nature. However, I absolutely get nervous still. My hands get sweaty. My pit, I have shown my pit stains on camera. Like I actually get sweaty and nervous. One of the things I do to prepare is I exfoliate. I exfoliate, I hydrate, I moisturize. You always feel better when you look good. Right, Amy? (laughs) Amen, sister. I love it. Step one, exfoliate. No, but um, I, I write down my content. I don't go on there blind. I think that people often assume that if you sound really confident and clear and concise and convicted on camera, that you you must be really good at improv. And that is absolutely not the case. I practice, I plan, I prepare. I write down my notes. I have a bullet point and I, and I create silly little acronyms like the IWS system, intro, welcome, share, so that I can remember to do the things that matter most. Always prepare in advance. Perfect. I'm totally with you on that one. Now here's one that when you and I were at the business boutique in the green room and we were chatting, you brought this up and I thought, oh, I love that you said that because I never really talked about this before, but I made this mistake. So many people make this mistake, but there are some people listening now that haven't yet done live video and they don't have to make the same mistake. And that is that you were telling me you would not suggest that somebody jumps on live video and they say, it's my first time here. This is my first live video. Woo. I'm so excited, but I'm nervous. And that's how they start their live. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So it's just like, everyone's uncomfortable now. <laughs> Everyone in yes. the room is uncomfortable. We all feel uncomfortable. We're, like <laughs> I was here because I was like, oh, who's this gorgeous, amazing person in front of me with these stellar eyebrows? She's so smart. <laughs> like that, that was where the space I was in. So there's no need to sort of share or project your nerves if other people don't have them. Like there's no need to do that. So when you first got on, just go right in, introduce yourself. Hey, my name is so-and-so. This is what I do. And this is what this broadcast is about. Super Super simple, super easy, and everyone is going to love you. Yes. And remember, you are their go-to source in that moment. You're their leader. You're the expert. So you want to show up as one. So I thought that was really sound advice there. Now, we also were chatting about the fact that once in a while, you and I do a live video and afterwards we're like, that was terrible. I want to delete it. Oh, geez. But we don't. And why not? 
because it's not about me. So there are so many times where I will get on Periscope and it'll it'll be like a bad day because I try to, you know, have really authentic, honest, like I'm going to show you the highs and lows of entrepreneurship. I'm not just coming on when I'm buying my Lamborghini. <laughs> I am also going to come on when my computer crashed in the middle of a launch. Or, because, yes, I remember that. Or know? when your dog is sick or your dog oh, dies. Dog I mean, right. There's both sides of it. Yes, you, know? you are and, very real. And it's important that people see that. But it also means that sometimes when I get on there, it gets a little bit too real and I can't hit that end broadcast button fast enough and a tear will you know, drop or I feel a little overwhelmed. And by the end of the broadcast, I'm kind of like, gosh, I was just, it was, that was a, a lot. I kind of want to delete that. And what happens is I say to myself, no, it's not about me. Other people want to do this too. And they're looking at me as a leader to provide that example. So they know exactly what it looks like. And someone is probably going to draw from that experience, or they're going to say, I will never, ever, ever be a hot mess on camera like her. So whatever it is, whatever it is, I want someone to grow and it's not up to me to delete it and take that experience from them. Oh, such a good lesson. I needed that one too, for sure. Next time I want to delete, I have to remember that. Okay. So to wrap up, my final question I have for you is around all these different live video platforms. So now we've got Periscope and Facebook live and now Insta, what are they calling it? Insta stories has live. I think it's called Insta stories. Yeah. Okay. So it's just Insta stories has a live component now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So with all of that, Talk to me about the differences or do you see differences in how maybe you would use these, these different platforms? Sure. So I get that all the time where people are like, well, is Periscope dead now that Facebook Live is going or is, you know, InstaStory is going to push out Snapchat? And it's one of those things where we all have to remember, first of all, I'm pretty sure Amy's also on Instagram and she's also on Facebook and she's also on Periscope. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, these, you don't have to replace one thing. We don't have to have shiny new object syndrome and all run to the other thing. Of course, you need to know where your people are. And I like to call that your hero platform. That's the place where all your people tend to reside. That's where they know how to find you. And you should never abandon it. So at least as long as it's in existence. So for instance, Periscope, that's where everyone found me to start. So that's where you'll always find me. I'll, I'll be there almost daily, if not every other day to check in, say hello and share, you know, something that's going on in my life and my business. Facebook though is an essential tool for building your business and you cannot ignore it. So I get on Facebook live regularly. I'm actually in the middle of doing a challenge where I'm on there daily at 6 AM every single day. And it is torture. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, you know, I am on there every morning and it's because it's an essential tool for building your business and there are a lot of people on there. So what's key is one, remembering your hero platform and then also remembering that you don't have to overlap how you use your platform. So Periscope for me is about finding new people because I'm not dealing with a changing algorithm or, you know, some days some people will see me and other days other people won't see me or I need to use cool catchphrases or weird hashtags. Periscope, if people pop on, they pop on and they find you. With Facebook Live, there's a lot more going on. What may work to one day may not work the next day. And you just have to put a lot more work in to make sure that you're on top of the crowd. So I really appreciate having both platforms. I use them a little bit differently, but I'm never going to abandon one. And I know where my people are. Ah, so well said, Nicole, I can't even tell you what a huge fan I am of you. And I love that we have not only a lot in common with our work, but I feel like you are just a friend for life. Thank you so much for being on this. It has been so fun. This is one of my favorite interviews because I love how well organized it was. Yay. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> oh my gosh. You have no idea. There's no greater compliment from Amy Porterfield than her saying something was organized. Because I mean, you hold this in the highest of regard. Oh, you already know me so well. You know what, what makes me a happy, happy girl for sure. Now I want to make sure that people find you. So where should they go to check you out? And you can give us a few different places. I'll make sure to include it in the show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash 140. But tell us where we can find you. And- well, also, real quick, you have a really cool program. So you could just talk about that a little bit too. Give us a little hint. Sure, absolutely. So everyone can find me at NicoleWalters.tv. That's where all my information is. That's where you can interact. You can find me there. I also manage all of my social media at Natural Nicole. So whether it's Twitter or Periscope, you can find me there. And I run my social media, so you'll be talking to me directly. I'll be answering and probably sending you the occasional snarky selfie. So <laughs> that that is real and that'll happen. And if you'd like to work with me, I just launched my newest course. It's called Fierce 
clarity. And fierce clarity is all about making sure that as you're selecting the next course to sign up for and you're trying to figure out what it is you want to do in your business, what fierce clarity does is it it helps you break down your best skill set, your best business idea, make sure that you're talking about it in a concise and convicted way that conveys your enthusiasm for your offering, but also make sure that you find the right audience. So it gives you a little bit of all the organization that Amy talked about here and making sure that you're set up for business success, whatever course platform or information that you decide to move forward with. So Fierce Clarity is available at myfierceclarity.com. Perfect. Thanks again, Nicole. I'm so very glad to have you on the show and we're going to have to do this again for sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I have. I absolutely love Nicole and she's so darn funny that it makes it extra fun to interview her. So if you want to check out Nicole and everything that she has to offer, all you need to do is go to my show notes at amyporterfield.com forward slash one four zero to check out the details and get all the links. Thanks so very much for tuning in. I can't wait to meet you here again soon. And until then, have a great week. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 